In today's video, the three biggest weight loss mistakes. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and today's video is about three common mistakes people make when they get into a fat loss phase. And this is not aimed at my typical competitor or someone that's been through many cycles of fat loss and reverse dieting is familiar with the whole process. This, this video is aimed at those that are potentially looking to lose weight. I've been getting some more questions regarding the process of losing weight. I get a lot of inquiries from those who have had a lot of success in the past at losing weight, but have been unable to keep it off. And honestly, I think that's probably the biggest issue with weight loss. It's not that we don't know how to lose weight or we're not able to lose weight. Everyone is able to lose weight at least a couple times in their lifetime. But the statistics are grim for those that go through a fat loss plan because the more times you go through a fat loss phase, the more likely it is statistically that you'll be overweight. So I want to talk about a little bit why that is. And I think a lot of these things will be addressed in the psychology of weight loss. So when we're talking about weight loss, the first thing everyone thinks about right away, when I say you need to lose weight, the first thing on everyone's mind is going to be their diet. And they think immediately, oh boy, I need to eat clean. Oh boy, I gotta cut out the pizza. There's an immediate negative connotation with dieting. And that needs to change, okay? For a diet to be successful, it can't be a complete collapse of your enjoyment of food, a complete collapse of your feeling that you can be social, that you can be a part of the world, because that is the first thing that happens, right? We immediately get into, okay, I'm gonna eat clean, and we have a couple good days, maybe even a whole week, maybe even a couple weeks, but then we have a bite of something or we get an invited to something and the psychology switches. Okay, if I can't be on this diet with these great foods, well then guess what I need to do? Completely change everything I'm doing or I'll just go off track for a couple days and I'll just catch back up on Monday. The problem with that is it just never sets us up for long-term success. We're either on our diet or we're off. There is no middle, okay? So the first most common mistake that I wanna say is getting on a diet that is not sustainable. Sustainability is the most important thing. Now, does that mean there's gonna be no restriction? Absolutely not. You're gonna to have to restrict, you're gonna to have to understand diet, and you're gonna to have to educate yourself a little bit on the calories that are in food. Something I often hear is, well, I can't lose weight, but I eat healthy. Well, healthy is a word that is used to describe a lot of foods at the grocery store that might not actually be fitting your goals for fat loss. I know a lot of people say, well, like I eat muffins. There's these muffins there, you know, I get them and they say healthy on them, healthy muffins. And there's a connotation with muffins being healthy. Well, muffins can have 20, 30 grams of fat in them, which can be plenty for your entire day, depending on what your weight loss goals are, right? So what I really like to do is start to educate and teach people to look at the values of food. And some people immediately get turned off. Oh, if it's that much work, I don't wanna do it. But I promise you, if you just take that first step, technology has made this so easy, right? So there are apps, there are websites, there are tons of ways that you can actually just track what you're eating without a whole lot of stress, okay? So that's it, the first step. Don't delve into a diet that requires you to completely wipe away all of your enjoyment of food, okay? There is such a thing as flexibility. I preach flexible dieting. Depending on what your goals are, we want structure to that flexibility. But the overwhelming consensus is that diets which restrict and remove foods and food groups and generally have a name are going to be not something you're able to sustain long term. Now some people will jump onto a diet like a paleo diet, like a ketogenic diet, and they'll sustain it forever because it's something that they enjoy and it fits with their lifestyle already. It fits with their beliefs, okay? Whereas others will go, oh, I'm gonna just cut out all carbs and as soon as they eventually have a bite of a carbohydrate, they get the cravings back and they just go back onto the eating. Whereas if they had just learned to be flexible with their nutrient intake, they could fit carbs into their daily diet. What's funny enough is companies like Weight Watchers and Jenny Craig where they, they kind of add point values to their foods 
I think they get it more right than the people that put out diet plans that are just like, you know, these certain foods are things you need to eat and these are foods you need to enjoy. It's like a fact of psychology. If I tell you you can't have something, most people are going to immediately just think about when the next time they can have that is, right? The second mistake, and this is something that we all do when we associate with fat loss, is we, we do too much cardio. So you immediately start thinking, okay, how do I create a caloric deficit? And cardio is a great way to do that. But I think one of the problems with cardio is that we immediately associate that with steady state cardio and endurance type cardio. Now, while this will help you lose weight, it will also cause your body to adapt. Thus, you'll have to continually increase cardio and you may get to a point where you're going to have to keep up with this hours and hours of cardio just to maintain your weight. Again, what happens is when people say reach their goal, they want to lose 30 pounds. They go on a restrictive diet, they do tons of cardio, they lose 30 pounds. When they reach their goal, they want to celebrate, as you do when you accomplish a goal. They go out, they eat some crap food, they don't do cardio for a couple days, and that scale is up 10, 12, 15 pounds, and they feel defeated. And they just think, well, I can't do it. I'm just going back to the way I used to live. Well, the fact is, what you need to be doing is when you get your cardio that high and you're doing steady state, you need to taper down. So if you got up to doing 30, 40, 50 minutes a day, you need to gradually taper it back down when you're off your plan. Another great alternative is things called intervals. So there's different types of cardio, right? So the intensity is what determines the fuel source and it also determines the recovery. Well, if you do things like high intensity intervals, you're gonna get different benefits than if you just do steady state. There's also just regular intervals, which is more of a moderate pace in between the slow paced cardio. So varying the cardio can also make it a lot more enjoyable, a lot more fun to do. Don't feel like you need to just go put your magazine on the Stairmaster or on the treadmill and just just stare at it for an hour every day, okay? I'm also a very big fan of non-exercise activity thermogenesis, or NEAT, which is just basically all the things that we do throughout the day that are not really considered exercise, things like going for a walk, playing with your kids, jumping in the pool, going to a theme park. Many of us will go on vacation and come back and be surprised that the scale is down or stable despite the fact that we were eating so much more food than we normally do. Well, a lot of that is because when we're home, we tend to be sedentary, right? We drive to work, we drive home, we sit on the couch, we watch some TV, our lives are sedentary. When you go on vacation, you're on the beach, you're taking walks, you're going for a swim, all right? You're walking to get another margarita, that's what I like to do, right? But you're just more active. The Fitbits, the uh, activity trackers, have really helped me realize that when I would travel, especially airport days, I would get as much as 20 to 30,000 steps in a day, where I only get three to 5,000 steps on a typical sedentary work day for me. So these are the kind of things that we can start to pay attention to, right? Not just doing a ton of cardio. Don't make that your default. Do cardio that's fun, do some sprints, go play a basketball game, uh, you know, join a class that you like, a spin class, something to make it enjoyable so that it's sustainable, okay? There's the theme again, sustainable. And then also, if you catch yourself being very sedentary, maybe you park far away from where you gotta go to work, so you walk, maybe you take the stairs. I know these are all kind of cliche, cliche things, but they really do add up. And finally, the biggest mistake that I feel like people make when entering a fat loss plan is they do not consider the value of resistance training. Sometimes people will say they don't want to get bulky or they don't want to put on a bunch of muscle. They want to be toned, not muscular, or they'll just avoid the gym because they feel like that's not really a part of the process of losing weight. And in fact, sometimes when you go to the gym and you do resistance training, you'll actually see the scale not drop because you increase your lean body mass. But here's the trick. Lean body mass actually increases metabolic rate. It's actually one of the few things that can increase our metabolism over time is having a little bit lower lean body mass. Also, adding muscle, it is not easy. You are not going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger by accident, okay? Those people spent decades getting that look, okay? And if you're not doing the things that they did to get there, you never will. Simply going to the gym and resistance training is a great way to increase calorie expenditure kind of while enjoying the gym without doing like a cardiovascular exercise. It's also a great way to keep calorie burning higher for the rest of the day, okay? Resistance training is really the fountain of youth in my opinion. You know, obviously I come from a background where I love bodybuilding and resistance training, but even for those people that have no interest in like physique enhancement, for the purposes of weight loss, when you pair tracking your diet with cardio and resistance training, 
you get an amazing effect on how it changes your body composition. Just because the scale doesn't go down and you get a little worried, the body composition is gonna be changing. And this is where you can do things like track measurements of your waist, your thigh, any area that you have an excess of body fat, it's gonna get a lot of benefit if you're actually resistance training as well. Now, you can start with one day a week, two days a week, go to your local gym. I actually have a resource for a free training guide. I'll link below, just email tyler at prophysique.com for a free like beginner's guide on just how to get into the gym, choose a gym, and you know be involved in resistance training. But those are my big three variables, okay? It's don't be on a diet that is super restrictive, removes carbs, or does anything like that if it's not something you can see yourself sustaining. Don't get into a cardio junkie mode. Do not become an endurance athlete for the sake of weight loss. If you love doing endurance training, then by all means do it. But if it's not something you can sustain, then don't do it. Don't be afraid of the gym. Don't be resistance. Don't be afraid of uh, putting in some time in the weights and the iron. Get into the gym. Get into a good habit of actually building your body up while you're tearing down the body fat, okay? It's going to be great for long-term health, okay? That's going to be it for me today, guys. It's my birthday. That's right. And I have been here all morning with my crack team getting ready for the Tampa Natural OCB Florida West Coast Classic a little more than two weeks away. I'll put the link below for that for anyone that wants to register. There is no registration deadline. Sorry for the, uh, for the selling you something on my video here, but hey, I got to talk about my stuff. I really appreciate you guys watching the video. And if you have any comments or questions below or something else you'd like me to talk about, I love hearing about it. I love hearing from you guys. Have an awesome Wednesday. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'm going to go spend the rest of my day with my wife.